you got the last two for the, the, the night. So this has nothing necessarily to do with real estate, but it, it directly ties into how effective of a real estate and entrepreneur that you can be, right? Because if you don't take care of your body and your health, you, you really can't, how, how are you gonna be a good real estate investor? How are you gonna be a good entrepreneur? You need energy, right? And I don't know if you, a lot of you guys know, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this about me, I'm fast. I've been fasting for five years. I hardly eat anything. I mean, you guys, my wife, Ben, some of the students that come hang out with me, Taylor, they came hang out with me for two or three days. It's like, dude, what do you eat? You know? I don't eat. I eat maybe one meal a day. Sometimes I don't eat for two or three days. You may think that's crazy, but th there's a science behind it, and that's why I wanted to bring this next speaker on, because he's an expert at it, and I randomly came across him on Facebook, and he's got it figured out. He's got an unbelievable story. He's going to give you guys the, the why, the how, and the benefits and the science behind fasting. So without further ado, I got Ben Azadi. He's a three-time best-selling health author and national speaker. He's on a mission to help one billion people live a healthier lifestyle. Go-to source when it comes to holistic health, longevity, anti-aging, functional fitness, and fat loss. Educate, not medicate, is his saying. So without further ado, give, give, please give a warm welcome to Ben Azadi. All right. I want to say thank you, Chris. First of all, when he said he's been fasting for five years, I thought somebody might think he hasn't eaten in five years. <laughs> oh my God. I'm not going to tell you to do that. As I pull up this slide here, so he, we're here in the business of real estate. We're all entrepreneurs in here and we all want to make a lot of money and we want to help a lot of people. It all starts with your health. Your health is your wealth. You can't do great things if you don't feel good. You have a family, you want to go on vacation, you want to have energy for your kids, for your family, you got to be healthy. You want to crush business deals, crush stages like this, you got to be healthy, you got to have the energy, you got to have the focus. And that's fasting does give you that. And I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about fasting and dispel common myths, but my presentation today is this right here. Five health hacks to 10x your life. I had to throw a little bit of some Grant Cardone in there. And I've been studying health and nutrition for 10 years. I'm a student of the game. Big self-development guide. I love Brad's talk. I love everybody's talk today, actually. It's great stuff. I can't wait for Miguel's talk tomorrow about mindset as well. Big fan of all that. So keep this in mind. My presentation today, 10 years of research, studying three hours every single day. Three hours every day, no exception. I don't say that to impress you. I say it to impress upon you. I've done a lot of research. There's a lot of information out there. A lot of bad information out there. I put together these five health hacks. If you take these health hacks and you run with it, you're going to 10x your life in every single area. Not just your real estate business, every single area. Relationships, finances, everything you want. So I want to acknowledge Chris and every single person who set this event up because I've never set up an event like this before and I don't know all the things that it takes to do this. So let's, all, let's give them a round of applause for every single person. Yeah. Amazing event, I'm excited to learn more. I want to also acknowledge every single one of you in here, especially my girlfriend over there who made the trip, but all of you because you are investing in yourself. You're not at home right now watching Netflix all day, you've spent money. I know a lot of you had to make a lot of different connections to come here. I heard some of your stories and you're here. So I acknowledge you guys, you're doing, I'm really impressed with you and you're not going to regret it because this is going to be life transformational information. So, I'm going to explain a little bit who I am. I'm, a, as Chris said, a three times best selling author. Next slide. I have three books one on fasting, one on sleep, one on just general health. 
I give public talks, uh, and this is what I do. This is my full-time gig. Next one. I'm a certified health practitioner. So I have clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one that are very challenged clients who have certain diseases, and I help bring their body from dysfunction to function. That's what health is. That's what perfect health is. Our creator, God, the universe, Mother Nature, whatever you believe in, created us to thrive, not to just survive. So that was me. You may not know this, but I used to be obese. I was actually the fat kid growing up. Bullied, picked on, low self-confidence, addicted to Madden and Call of Duty, Tombstone pizzas, and a lot of self-limiting beliefs, what Brad was talking about. If I were to speak to my best friend the way I was speaking to myself, my best friend would have smacked the crap out of me. I was just tearing myself down. And that's what I looked like on the outside, but it was even worse on the inside. That's me. Keep going. Keep going. Stop right there. I was 22 years old there. And I don't know if you could agree, I'm 34 here standing in front of you, and I think I look younger right now than I did 12 years ago. And that's what health does to you, or I should say when you're not taking care of your health, that's what it does to you. So this is a quote from my book, and it's perfect for what Brad was talking about. Because up until that point that you saw me there, that was 10 years ago when I went through this transformation. I was blaming everyone and everything for my problems, right? My slow metabolism, my genetics, my mom, the president, whatever it was, I was blaming that thing, except for the person that I needed to blame, which was myself. And it all started to change the second I took personal responsibility. Radical responsibility, like Brad was talking about. So what I do when I start my lectures is I want to get everybody involved with me here because my life changed the moment I said those three words. I am responsible. And I don't know if you've studied Wayne Dyer before, the great and late Wayne Dyer. He says, if other people were the reason for your problems, you're going to have to hire a psychiatrist and send it to the world in order for you to get better. You are... You get what you want in life from your thoughts, like Brad said. You get what you think. We don't get what we want, we get what we are. So I want to say it loud and proud with all of you awesome people here today. We're going to shout it out. I am responsible together. I'm going to count to three. And let's do it great the first time, because then I'm going to just stand here for 15 minutes asking you to do it over and over. So on the count of three, we're going to say I am responsible. One, two, three. I am Awesome. Doesn't that feel good? Next. Nine months later, I went from 250 pounds on the left to 170 pounds on the right. 34% body fat to 6% body fat. Size 38 waist to size 30 waist. It all started with taking responsibility. But what you don't see there is that I used to be mentally obese. And I carved out a rock solid mental six pack. And that's just as important as a physical six pack, if not more. So that's my mission. Chris had mentioned it. I'm on a mission to impact the lives of one billion people, not just for my story, but for my father who's passed, who got sick from a lifestyle disease that was treated with medication. And it's an epidemic in America. I mean, you see it everywhere. Two out of three people are overweight or obese. 52% of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic. So it's my mission to educate, not medicate. It's my mission to teach, not treat. And that's my mission statement right there. And that's why I'm so grateful to be in front of you today. Because you know what? 150,000 people die every single day. Let that sink in. 150,000 people die every single day. Somebody's dying right now as I'm saying this. We're here. We're breathing. We're alive. That's something to be grateful for. Gratitude and love, two of the big, biggest healers in this world. It starts with loving yourself, and then others love you. You can do all the things I'm going to tell you today, 
But if you are resentful, if you hate yourself, you're not going to get healthy. You got to love yourself. It heals you. You got to have gratitude. Write down five things you're grateful for every single day. I have all my clients do it. Dan's in here. Uh, I'm not sure where he is. Dan's somewhere in here, but Dan does it every single day. Yeah, there he is. He has his gratitude post. Next slide. So this is my goal. This is the competition right here on the bottom, and that's going to be you when you leave. I want to I want you to rocket ship out of here. I want to 10x your life with these principles. And I promise it's going to be different than what you've heard before. But I want you to just have the faith in me. And I'm going to explain a little bit what I mean by that. Next. How many of you, when you could raise your hand, would love to live 120 years without disease? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've been programmed to do that. Our creator designed us to do that. So that's these five hacks that I'm going to give you are going to be helping you get down that direction. I want to ask you guys, and I have some gifts here actually. I don't even know why I'm still holding this. So why are you here? Who wants to shout some things out? Like, what? Not just with the health stuff, but for this conference. Who, who, why are you here? Perspective. Skills. Perspective. Skills. Self-development. Self improvement. Leadership, mindset. Better support your what? Your husband. Yeah, Brad. Is that Brad? <laughs> nice. Everybody who answered, I got a free shirt for you. Come see me after, and I got a book too. So if you can continue to answer me, I'm going to give you free stuff. Next. How many of you have seen this show before? Yeah. All right, this is Seinfeld, one of my favorite shows from the 90s. George Costanza was a popular character in Seinfeld. Let me just see how much time I have. Okay. So George Costanza was a popular character, and he was miserable. Bad relationships, finances down there. So he had the idea, in one of these episodes, to do everything opposite from what he had been doing his entire life. So anytime he wanted to do something, oh, I'm going to do the opposite. Everything in his life improved. Relationships, finances. So what I teach, and what I'm about to teach you, it's very different than what you've ta learned before. It's very different than what the mass is talking about. It's what I call the Costanza effect. Whatever you see the government guidelines promote, articles on Facebook, Instagram posts, posts uh, talk about health and nutrition, do a 180, the complete opposite, the Costanza effect, and you're gonna get great results. And be careful when you follow the masses because the M is usually silent. <laughs> So this is my goal, to have you stand out from the rest of the pack, to be the 3%. The truth of the matter is that 3% of the population, the world, think. They're actually thinking. They're cre creating an original thought. They have self-awareness, what Brad was talking about. 3%. 2% of the population think they think, and 95% of the population would rather die than think. So. You guys are the 3%. That's why I wanted to acknowledge you. This information that I'm going to share with you is the 3% that's going to skyrocket you out of here with your health. So here are the five hacks. Here's number one, how to become an idea generating machine. This is a super cool hack because it's going to help. It's, it's going to be like steroids for your brain. BDNF. Charge your brain with BDNF. So, BDNF stands for brain-derived neurotropic factor. I know it's a, it's a, hand, it's a mouthful. And what it is, it's, it's essentially mir miracle growth for your brain. The more BDNF you produce, the more creative you are. The better you could deal with problems. You know, you're getting phone calls, there's things, you, you are essentially a firefighter who's putting out fires in your business. You know, when you have BDNF, high levels of BDNF, you could, you, you're not stressing out about that stuff. You could take a moment and relax and figure out a creative way to deal with that obstacle and turn that obstacle into an opportunity. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about BDNF and the best ways to produce it. So there's a great book by my, my mentor, Dave Asprey. He's the Bulletproof guy. You've probably heard of Bulletproof Coffee before. He has this book called Headstrong. It's all about brain function. So here's a technique he, showed, he shares in his book. 
And I recommend doing this on days that you have a big meeting, maybe a presentation, you wanna be on top of your game. And I'm gonna explain why this is the technique. You would run 400 yards as fast as possible. You could also row, you could also swim, but you wanna do it like a freaking lion or tiger is chasing you, right? You're gonna do that, it's gonna activate your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight. So do that as fast as possible. Then you're gonna lie down on your back for 90 seconds. You set a timer, you're gonna be breathing deeply. For 90 seconds, you're gonna lie down on your back. Because when you activate your sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight, and then you lie down on your back and you're activating that rest and digest, your brain actually floods with BDNF. So you do this two times on one of those days where you, you wanna be on top of your game, you're gonna be a rock star. If you, have you ever gone to the gym and you get a good workout in and you're in your car driving home and that music sounds really good, like it sounds better than when you were driving through the gym? There's something about it. That's BDNF right there. There's an edge to it. So this is a powerful way. I'm gonna give you three more here. Blueberries have been shown a lot of research. I love blueberries. Eat them frozen because the ice crystals they bypass a certain part of your digestive system and you get more of the antioxidant. So eat them frozen and get them organic. Green tea is the next one. Big fan of green tea if you want to burn belly fat. It has catechins in it and it targets belly fat. Yes, you could target belly fat. And the third one is intermittent fasting, which I'm going to get to later, but that's been shown to produce BDNF. Okay, I wrote a book all about sleep because I truly believe sleep is so important, especially for entrepreneurs. I used to be one of those entrepreneurs who said, yeah, I'll sleep when I'm dead, YOLO. You know, I need to hustle, I need to do what I need to do and sacrifice my sleep. And I realized that I was actually sacrificing my progress by putting sleep on the back burner. Sleep is more important than diet and exercise combined. You could go to the gym and work out, you could eat super healthy, but if your sleep is not on point, you're not gonna get the results you want. We burn 98% of our fat so 98% of fat burning takes place during sleep. You activate the top six fat burning hormones in Delta Sleep 4, stage four. Is anybody familiar with telomeres? Anybody? This is a, uh, cool, I have to share it with you. Did you raise your hand, Chris? Oh, Chris knows. So these are, telomeres are, are tiny little end caps at the end of our DNA. So when we're born, we have a certain length of telomeres. And I want you to think of telomeres as kind of like the shoelaces you have on, you know that plastic casing that holds the shoelaces together? Those are your telomeres. So you have a certain length, and as you age, it starts to shorten. The faster it shortens, the more susceptible you are to diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes. It's, it's the most accurate way to predict how somebody's gonna live. You can actually test your telomeres. It's really cheap. There's a company called teloyears.com and you can test your uh, cellular age. So you have your chronological age, I'm 34, and I can test my cellular age. You could actually, I call it the Benjamin Button effect, you could actually reverse aging. So telomeres are super important. It's a great way to see how healthy your cells are, how long are you going to live. Do you know the number one influence on your telomeres? Sleep. So when you say, I'll sleep when I'm dead, that's gonna happen sooner than you'd like. Honestly, the telomeres are shortening fast. They're smoking as well, exercising too little or too much. Like these are also factors, but this is the biggest one right here. So you can test your telomeres. You can actually, I have some of my clients who join my program and they'll test their telomeres. Maybe they're 10 years older with their cells and I'll put them on a protocol for six months and they'll reverse their cellular age by five years. You could do that. It's the Benjamin Button effect. It's really, really cool, and it's not expensive to test. So here are three ways to get better sleep. I have these in my book. Number one, something called money time sleep window. This is a really cool one because it's perfect for an entrepreneur. Roughly between the hours of 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., this is the money time sleep window. Every hour of sleep within this window is equivalent to two hours of sleep outside of this window. And it's based off of our circadian rhythm. You see, all of our hormones are synced with mother nature. The sun goes up, we're supposed to wake up. 
Cortisol goes up, melatonin goes down. The sun goes down, we're supposed to go down, and all these amazing things happen. So the closer we can follow this pattern from our hunter and gatherer ancestors, the healthier we're gonna be. So if you wanna get, if you're only getting five hours of sleep, you would be much better off getting those five hours within those win that, this window right here. So rule number one is get to bed roughly two hours after the sun has gone down. Depends on where you live, but that's a good general rule to follow. Second one is avoid nighttime blue light. So I wear blue blockers at night. I actually brought them with me on this trip. My girlfriend makes fun of me all the time because I'm wearing them all the time. They, you put them on at nighttime and it filters out the blue light because this blue light causes your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, to go up and your melatonin, which is your sleep hormone, to go down. You don't want that at nighttime. You want to avoid nighttime stimulation as much as possible. So these are cool blue blocker glasses you can buy for 60 bucks on Amazon. They're called uh, Swanix is the name of the brand or True Dark is another one. You put them on at night. You know, you can still be on your phone for a little bit. It'll filter out some of that blue light so you can produce some of that sleep hormone melatonin. The last one is my favorite because it's really easy to do. It's something called banana tea. And I actually learned this from my mentor, Dr. Michael Bruce, who is America's sleep doctor. And here's how you make it. You just grab a whole banana, you leave the peel on, but you cut off the ends. You put that banana into a pot with about four cups of water and you let it boil for five minutes. The peel of the banana has more of these micronutrients, the potassium, the magnesium, that help you relax than the actual banana itself. So you let it boil and then you just pour that water into a cup and there's your banana tea. If you are somebody who struggles with their, 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 their mind is just racing at night and you just can't get to bed, you can't fall asleep, this is nature's night quill right here. If you wanna add a little bit of some cinnamon, and a teaspoon of raw honey to give your brain a little bit of glucose, that should help you stay asleep. So if you have trouble staying asleep, one teaspoon of raw organic honey before bed will do the trick. A, a caveat on the banana, make sure it's organic because you don't want pesticides seeping into the water. Number three, a, power morning, a powerful morning ritual. I'm gonna give you a powerful one right now. So we lose about one liter of water during sleep, through breathing, one liter. It's important to replenish that water that we lost when we wake up. So have 16 ounces of water with sea salt. Sea salt helps replenish your electrolytes. Especially if you're doing something like a, keto, a ketogenic diet, you want to replenish your electrolytes, otherwise you're gonna feel like crap. Number two, get 15 to 20 minutes of sun because you're letting that sun activate cortisol. It's gonna give you energy. It's suppressing melatonin, which is what you want in the morning. Number three, any coffee drinkers in here? Yeah, me too. If you wait an hour and a half to have your coffee, you're gonna get much, much more from it because when you wake up in the morning, like I said, cortisol is activated. Cortisol is your energy stress hormone. Right? It's wonderfully produced because back in the day, when our ancestors faced a lion or a tiger, cortisol was activated to either fight that beast or run away from that beast, but it gave them the energy to do it. Cortisol is much more powerful than caffeine. So if you have your caffeine first thing in the morning, that caffeine does not stand a chance to cortisol. So all of that is rendered useless. But here's the thing. If you wait an hour and a half, your cortisol begins to naturally peak down. Then you have your caffeine, that's gonna give you long-term sustainable energy for the entire day. So have your coffee or tea, if you drink tea with caffeine, an hour and a half after you wake up. So that's a powerful morning routine right there. If you start your day with that, you can throw in some meditation, your goals and all the things that you, that you do as well. But this is a, a, a three-step approach to owning the day. You own the morning and you own the day. Okay, this is a favorite topic of mine because the ketogenic diet is super, it's so popular. It's one of the most searched terms on Dr. Google. Has anybody tried the ketogenic diet before? Okay, cool. I love the keto diet, just not long term. And I'm gonna explain why, but I'm gonna give you five 
ways to get into ketosis and whatever, and I'm going to explain what that means. And these five ways also are going to mitigate any damage or side effects that happen when you go from being a fat burner to a sugar burner. So I'll explain what that means with the next slide. So if you want to take a picture of this, this is going to be a powerful way if you're ever considering going keto or if you're doing it right now. Number one is to replace most of your carbohydrates with healthy fats. You see, most people, they're sugar burners. Your cells, you're made up of trillions of cells, right? It could only choose two sources of fuel, either sugar or fat. 95% of people are burning sugar for fuel. And if you want to know how you can test, this is the easy test right here. You skip a meal and you see how you feel. If you skip a meal and you feel hangry, you can't focus, you're going to punch your husband or wife in the face, that's a sign that you're a sugar burner. And I used to be one too. If you skip a meal and you feel actually terrific, you feel great, that means you are fat adapted. That's what you want because the cell membrane, your cells in general, loves fat. The cell membrane is made up of fat. And if you want to lose weight, if you want to have more energy, you want to reduce, uh, uh, prevent disease, it starts with the cell. If you want to get well, you have to heal the cell. And that was taught to me by one of the most, lead, the, the world-class leader in health, Dr. Dan Pompa. So you go to do, dietitians and nutritionists, or, and even doctors, and they're going to tell you, okay, let's help you lose weight to get healthy. And that is nonsense. It's completely backwards. You don't lose weight to get healthy. You get healthy, and a side effect, you lose weight. You have more energy. Whatever you're dealing with goes away. Because being overweight is not the problem. Having low energy is not the problem. When I was obese, that was not the problem. That is the symptom. So what I'm talking about is the cells. And your cells love fat. When it's burning sugar for fuel, that's like burning firewood in a house. It creates a lot of smoke and it's gonna be a toxic environment. When you're burning fat for, as your primary fuel source, it's like a gas stove. It's a very clean source of fuel. So step number one would be to replace most of your carbs with healthy fats and to stop snacking. You'll have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, nothing in between. This is before we get into the fasting. You just do this first. Second thing is to eat seven to 10 cups of green leafy vegetables. I say that because we require 4,700 milligrams of potassium every day. Potassium is the most important electrolyte. 4,700 milligrams. One banana has 400 milligrams. Right? In comparison, that's nothing. And I'm not saying to eat a whole bunch of bananas, but I am saying to eat seven to 10 cups of green leafy vegetables because you'll meet your requirement. So that's number two. Number three, have bitter rich foods. Arugula, ginger, radicchio, organic coffee for healthy bile. The problem with the ketogenic diet, when somebody goes to a keto diet and they start to feel like crap, they have sluggish bile. Your liver produces bile, it's stored in the gallbladder and it breaks down fat. Most people have a lot of toxins in their body which creates sluggish bile and they feel they can't break down the fat. So when you eat these bitter rich foods, it helps you produce bile. So if you're going keto, you gotta throw in these bitter rich foods. Number four is my two, 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 two rule that I learned from Dr. Pompa. Two tablespoons of coconut oil or MCT oil, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of extra virgin cold press processed olive oil, and two teaspoons of salt. You follow this approach, you're gonna feel satiated, you're gonna feel good, you're gonna be able to go in between meals and then do some fasting, which I'm gonna talk about next. The fifth step is the most important one. Do not stay in ketosis too long. This is what separates what I teach from others. I'm actually writing a book right now, my fourth book called The Keto Flex Diet. It's gonna be out sometime next year, and it's all about this. It's, most people are telling you to stay in ketosis, but here's the thing, it's super interesting. When you are only using fat for fuel, your body starts to really get clever, and it actually slows down fat burning, and it puts water in your cells, and we need carbs. We need the insulin from carbs to convert specific hormones, like T4 thyroid to T3, and estrogen, and different things. So we need to have what I call feast days. So I think it's important to go in and out of ketosis. That's why I call it the keto flex diet. 
Okay, this is, I left some time for this because this is my favorite topic and this is what Chris talked about earlier. Three of the biggest influencers in the history of this world. Like these, so we have the Prophet Muhammad, we have Jesus Christ, and we have Buddha. They didn't agree on a lot of things, but they agreed on one thing. What was it? Fasting. Yes. The power of fasting. Fasting is the number one search term on Dr. Google in the health space. I can't believe it. It's really surprising because nobody's making money from it. There's a lot of people that are losing money, a lot of companies that are losing money. Here's the thing though, fasting is not a fad. It's not a health trend, right? It's a fact. It's been around since, we've been around since the dawn of humankind. Our ancestors, they were forced to fast. They had to do it. So once you become fat adapted with the keto steps, that's, a, that's the uh, prerequisite by the way. You gotta do the keto steps before you fast. Otherwise, it's, it's like sitting on a couch for 10 years and then running a marathon, it's not gonna look good. We have been designed to function without food. We eat food and we store body fat. We don't eat food and we burn body fat. That's the way we were created. Does anybody know, who hasn't followed my work, does anybody know the Guinness World Record for the longest fast? And if you get it right, I'm gonna give you a t-shirt and a book. What? 54 days, anybody else? 38 days, 120, 60, I heard of 300, right? Who said 380? Okay, 380, so 382 days, besides Chris's five years, 382 days. It was this gentleman, I don't know, I think I have a slide of him, do I? Let's see, yeah, there you go. So this is him, this 27-year-old, morbidly obese guy from uh, Scotland. He weighed 450 pounds on the left. He did a medically supervised fast. He just had water and a multivitamin for 382 days. And he went from 450 pounds on the left to 180 pounds on the right. And get this, every single one of his blood markers looked perfect. This is just an extreme example to show you that we store body fat, so when we're not eating, we pull out that body fat. It's the natural way that we were designed. It's, it's a beautiful thing, it's a survival mechanism. So the problem happens is, is that we're eating too much, we're eating too frequently. And I always tell people in lectures, and, and I get these looks sometimes, and I'm gonna say it anyways. If you want to age faster than anyone you know, Eat every two to three hours, because that's gonna do it. Every time you're eating food, you're spiking glucose. Every time you spike glucose, your body needs to deal with that. It needs to take it from out of the blood to your cells, your liver cells, your muscle cells, and it creates this browning effect on your cells. So think of like when you bite into an apple and it turns brown, that's what you're doing every time you eat, and it's normal, but you're doing it faster and faster, it's like putting your foot on the pedal and just hitting that gas and getting to your destination faster than you'd like. That's what's happening when you're eating every two to three hours. When you're fat adapted, you could go hours, you could go days without food. Like, like Chris says, he feels on top of his game. I'm fasted right now, whenever I have an important event, I fast, I do three, to day, three and a half days uh, fasting. I do, I'm gonna do a five day fast with my group in, in January and I'm gonna explain a little bit more about that. But once you're fat adapted, I'm telling you, your body just goes from burning sugar to burning fat, and you feel great. Amazing things start to happen, which I'm gonna teach you right now. Next. This is a powerful ana analogy I'm gonna give you. If there's one thing I want you to walk away with my, from my talk with, it's gonna be this, because this is gonna be a game changer if you, if you let it. We have this refrigerator here, it's, it's stocked full of groceries, and every single one of these groceries, they, it has an expiration date, right? Best used by November 30th, best used by December, whatever. What's gonna happen if we let months and months and months go by, and those, we just let those groceries expire? It's gonna be toxic, it's gonna be a nasty environment. Next slide. There's gonna be mold, there's gonna be bacteria. And let's say we do this. We go to the supermarket and we buy new groceries, fresh groceries with new expiration dates. And we take them back home 
and we put those groceries in front of these expired groceries, uh, expired groceries. We just kind of push these expired groceries towards the back and put these new groceries in front of it. It's still gonna be a toxic environment, right? This is what we're doing with our body if we are not fasting. When you fast, your body literally takes out the trash. I'm gonna explain what that means. There is a process called autophagy, right? And, it, and it's like a fasting switch that activates. Your body literally seeks out damaged cells and damaged protein and it uses it for energy. It has this innate intelligence. I'm telling you, our creator, brilliant, amazing. Your body's literally doing, all you need to do is remove the interference and your body's gonna heal itself. Whatever health thing you got going on, whether it's just a couple extra pounds, some love handles, or if you've got something serious, you remove the interference and your body will heal itself. Fasting is a way for you to take that junk out of your body and repair yourself, heal yourself. It's one of the most powerful tools that I can give you. Next. That's why we have this doctor who is a world-renowned cancer doctor out of Boston, Boston College, Dr. Thomas Seafried. And here's what he says, next, next slide. He says, if you complete a seven day water only fast once per year, you reduce your chances of any cancer by 95%. Wow. 95% because of this autophagy effect. Next. Think of it as Pac-Man going through your body just eating up those damaged cells. We all have cells inside of us that if we don't do something about it, one day could turn into disease. When you fast, you don't have to worry about that. Your body's gonna take care of itself. So around the 12 hour mark to the 16 hour mark, this autophagy happens, but it really gets ramped up on day three, day four, day five, but you're still getting it with intermittent fasting. That's what we're talking about here today. I'm not gonna tell you to go out there and do a 382 day fast. I'm gonna explain some simple steps that you could do to start fasting next week. Here are some more benefits of fasting. If you spend 20 minutes every day eating breakfast, I did the math for you, that's 4,800 minutes a year, 80 hours and 3.3 days. So you can use that time meditating, writing down your goals, doing whatever you want. That's time you get back. So fasting saves you time. Next. If you spend $10 on breakfast every day, that's $2,400 a year. You can put that in Facebook ads, hire somebody, invest in a course, so fasting gives you money. Next. Uh, I wanna give you this gift, by the way. If you go to fastingcheatsheet.com, this is my best-selling book on fasting. You'll get a free digital download of it. I also have a few copies here. Um, so if you can see me after, I'll give you a paperback copy as well. This book is the top 20 questions I get on fasting answered. So you can read this in like 30, 45 minutes and it'll answer the top 20 questions that I've been getting. I've been doing fasting for five years as well, just like Chris, and I got a lot of questions and I put the top 20 questions in it and I answered it with science. And then there's some pictures in there and it's very easy. The tools that I gave you today are powerful tools like this chainsaw, right? This chainsaw, it could get the job done if you know how to use it. Fasting, the ketogenic diet, it could get the job done if you know how to use it. It can also hurt you if you don't know how, how to use it, right? That's why it's important to have a coach, it's important to have a mentor, it's important to have a resource that you can use to help guide you through it. The steps I gave you with the keto, the top five steps, if you didn't take a picture of that, come up to me and I'll, and I'll send you the slide, the slide deck. That's how you become a fat burner. That's how you let your, you force actually your cells to choose fat for fuel, okay? Your body loves it when you choose fat for fuel. It creates this adaptation, hormone optimization. You see, there's, I wouldn't stand up here and tell you, you gotta go vegan, you gotta go vegetarian, you gotta go keto. There's no diet, there's no culture in the history of this world that ever stuck to one diet long term but they did all get into ketosis. They got in and out of ketosis, and that is the health hack right there. If you can teach your body to get in and out of ketosis and have your feast days, have your carb days, you're gonna feel like a rock star. You're gonna own your day, you're gonna own your life. I can't even explain to you how it feels when you're producing ketones, because when you're, when you're not burning sugar anymore, your liver produces ketones to power your brain. 
and you feel great. I mean, it's hard to explain, right? It is. It's, it's like a drug, and that's why I can't stop fasting, because once you start, it literally is a drug. You feel so good naturally. It's literally like a drug, he says. He feels so good naturally. I, I agree. And it's hard to explain in words. You kind of just got to experience it for yourself. But it takes those five steps to get into it. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave a little bit of time for some Q&A, but I just wanted to paint this illustration that it's important to know what you're doing because there's a lot of people teaching keto, a lot of people teaching fasting now, and they're, they're just telling you, okay, yeah, go fast. Here's an easy way to do it, okay? Once you are fat adapted, you do that test, you skip a meal, and you actually feel good, you have earned the right to fast, and this is how you start fasting. You have your last meal at 8 p.m. at night, you go to bed, you have your next meal at 8 a.m. You just fast in 12 hours. That doesn't sound crazy, right? And then you push it to 13 hours the next day. And then 14 hours. And then if you could get to 16 hours, that is a good number right there. Fasting is not about eating less. It's not about cutting your calories. Fasting is about eating less often. Giving your body a period of time so it can heal itself. What's happening in this day and age when there's so much disease, we're overfed. We're overworking our body. We don't, let, we don't remove the interference. I'm gonna give you a perfect example right here. Let's say somebody goes into their corporate job and they clock in at 9 a.m. and they work an eight hour shift. It's now 5 p.m. and they're, they're walking to their car and they're happy, they're going home to get some rest and they get a phone call from their boss, hey, we need you to come back in and work another five hours. So this person goes back into the office, they work another five hours, they're walking to their car, it's now 10 p.m. They get that same phone call from their boss. We need you to come back for another five hours. Imagine this happening over and over and over for days, weeks, months, years. This is what's happening to our digestive system, to our body when we're not fasting. It's just overworking. So when we fast, you give yourself a break. You, give your, you let your body heal itself. It's one of the most powerful tools that I can give you. So here's what I want to offer to you before I get into the q and I have a program. I know Dan's in it. And uh, it's called the Shred Fat Mastermind Program. You get health coaching from me. So all of my research, all of my studies, I curate it for you. I have a weekly coaching call, a group coaching call. You get group support. I have a book club where we go through books like The Go-Giver, like um, As a Man Thinketh. We're, we're doing uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People right now. Uh, and then you get all my content. I have protocols. If you have high cholesterol, oh, I have a protocol for that. Oh, you can't stay asleep. Oh, I have a protocol for that. You have arthritis, I have a protocol for that. You have multiple sclerosis, I have a protocol. So I have all of my content in there, it's in the portal. And it's $247 per month. And here's what I want to offer to you. Next slide. I discounted it to $97 per month for the next 24 hours. So that's the domain right there. If you go to shredfatmastermindspecial.com within the next 24 hours, actually it's gonna expire at 5 p.m. tomorrow. You could lock in that rate, you're grandfathered in to that rate, and you get complete access to me, to people in my group, and, you get, and Chris is in that group, by the way. You get to learn everything that I've been researching, and I continue to research. For 90, less than a cup of coffee a day, you get access to that. Next slide. That's my Instagram handle, and I, I, I wanna say a few things is that the, the information I just shared with you, I know it sounds Great, like you want to do this. You know, you have the intentions. Yeah, I want to try being fat adapted. I want to fast and I want to do this. And not just with my information, all the information that you're going to learn this weekend, nothing will happen until you take action. You could have the best intentions in the world, but the world does not reward intentions. The world rewards action. Just saying you're going to do something and not do it, that's like winking at a pretty girl in the dark. It's ineffective, it's gonna produce zero results. So whether it's this that's resonating with you and you wanna get healthy and you wanna learn more about what I'm doing or whatever the other speakers are offering, if it resonates with you, I just wanna encourage you to take action with it. You know, follow, follow your heart, you know, and if it makes you kind of a little scared and, and your heart skips a beat, you know it's the right decision. That's the right one. If it feels, you know, comfortable, like, yeah, it sounds good, yeah, maybe I'll do it. That's probably not the right one. So I, I left a, a few minutes here to, for some Q and A's. Does anybody have questions on the fasting? Yeah.
do you have? What's, what's the usual meal for you? Okay. So he says that he fasts for 14 to 16 hours, and after he eats, he gets tired. I would say to give your digestive system some support with some digestive enzymes to help you break it down, and chew frequently. I know it sounds like pretty basic, but when you chew 20 times, you're letting your saliva break down that food so your body doesn't have to do it. And then also, maybe save that big meal for your last meal, right? Because that way you're just gonna relax and get into bed. I'm a big fan of having most of your carbs, not in the morning, but actually late afternoon, early evening. So most people are gonna tell you have it in the morning, I'm gonna tell you have it later on. So I would say digestive enzymes, and maybe you could bring down the fast to 12 hours and see if that helps. And if it's not that, it's probably the enzymes. Eat a fatty salad every day. So eat um, seven to 10 cups of those green leafy vegetables with some avocado, some eggs, some fish. I have my members of that group that I showed you, they're all eating a fatty salad every day. So if that's something you wanted to get from here, a fatty salad every day is gonna help you have stable energy levels. Because when you eat carbs and protein, you spike glucose and insulin, and then it has to go back down and you kind of feel sluggish. When you eat a lot of healthy fats, you don't get that spikes. Fat doesn't really raise insulin, so you get steady energy. So a fatty salad every day would be great, okay? Any other questions on the fasting? How long should you do the fast, like minimum? Min that's a great question. So he says, how long should you fast? What's the minimum that you should fast for? 12 hours. 12 hours should be the bare minimum because it takes about 12 hours to digest food. So if you're not letting your body let it go from the digestive system to the colon and out of your body, it's gonna create dysfunction. So 12 hours is the bare minimum. And I get, something I get a lot, the most common objection I get to this, is that Ben, I need to eat for energy. I need to eat because it gives me energy. Eating food does not give you energy. It's actually the complete opposite. It takes massive amounts of energy and resources to, di to chew the food, to digest the food, to assimilate it from macronutrients to micronutrients, and you're taking blood flow away from your brain to process that food, right? Think of next week we have Thanksgiving for, for you Americans, right? After you eat Thanksgiving meal, you're like, I'm done. I wanna watch this, the Cowboys game or something because your blood flow is being directed to the digestive system. So once you become fat adapted, I promise you, like Chris and I are talking about, you're gonna have rock star energy levels. I can't even explain it. It's just like, I'm excited for you if you're trying it out. Yeah. Ben, awesome stuff, buddy. Um, two, actually, I have two questions. One, how does alcohol fit into all this? <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's, it's important for a lot of people in this room. Seems like everybody has that question. And, and two, what would your insight be for people in the room who have kids? Like I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Is this anything that you would suggest to do with children or not? So let's address the first one, alcohol. I like, uh, if you are gonna have alcohol, there's something called dry farm wines. So if you're a wine drinker, this is the best wine you can get, dry farm wines. Uh, I also like, um, just like hard, like hard liquor, like whiskey, if you're gonna go that route. I'm not a fan of beer because beer is estrogenic. So I would say with alcohol, limit it. Limit your alcohol. Something you can do actually to help with alcohol or if you find yourself, you're about to eat a huge carb-loaded meal or if you're about to drink a lot of alcohol, here's a little hack for you. Do 50 body weight squats. Just squat 50 times and then you can have it because when you do that, you're gonna shuttle that glucose spike into the pathways for energy and not into the pathways for fat storage. So that's a cool little hack for you. So alcohol, I would say in moderation, and whiskey and dry farm wines would be my go-to. I like a Moscow Mule, by the way, too, because it has bitters in it, so it helps you actually digest it. Okay, so beers I would stay away from. Now, the second question was for, for children. You know, children are in that growth phase, so I, I would say that fasting is not really um, suited for them, but they don't have to be snacking all the time. Huge breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and that should, that should be good for them. But, but snacking, I mean, you, you see, you, you probably go to your kid's school, or when they go to school, these soccer games are giving them juices and Gatorades and cookies, and they're, they're becoming a sugar burner. When we're born, every single one of you, when you were born, you were a natural fat burner. The breast milk that we got 
helped us as babies produce ketones because our brain is mostly fat and we needed ketones to develop our brain. So burning fat is our birthright. But then we grow up and we have snacks and we have sugar and Gatorade and granola bars and we become sugar burners. So it is our, I'm trying to teach you to get back to the way our ancestors were for thousands and thousands of years. So I would say not really too much fasting for kids, but breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and not too much snacks. Yes? Yes, I love it. I love that question. How does this work with muscle development? So it's so cool because when you fast, you turn down, you're tearing down protein, right? Not muscle, but lean protein. There's a, there's a difference there. So you're tearing down junky protein. But when you fast, your body activates something called counter-regulatory hormones. One of them is something called human growth hormone, which is muscle preserving. So after a 24-hour fast has shown to increase human growth hormone in men 2,000%, in women 1,300%. Human growth hormone, we have celebrities that pay thousands of dollars every single month for their doctor to inject human growth hormone because it helps them look younger and feel good and, and perform better. There's side effects when you get it injected. When you fast, you get a 2,000% increase. So what happens is that your body's gonna tear down some protein and then you break the fast and you build up new healthier protein. So it's actually a great way to put on some size. I, and you could train in the fasted state as well because when you work out in the fasted state, not only do you feel really good, but your human growth, growth hormone skyrockets, dude. Up, up, Scott, up really high. And then if you continue two to five hours without food, I know it sounds crazy, but don't eat anything. Then you break your fast with a high protein meal, you're gonna get a lot of muscle building factors there. So it's totally fine. Your body's not gonna tap into its muscle until you reach 5% body fat or less. And, and uh, I get this backlash a lot because I used to own a CrossFit gym in Miami and I just sold it. And the members used to think that I was crazy sometimes. They're like, what are you talking about? Our creator didn't design us to eat food and store body fat and then burn muscle when we needed, we needed energy. That's like storing firewood all summer long to get ready for winter, right? And then winter comes around and we have all this firewood body fat that we stored up and then we chop up our couch and throw that into the furnace. It doesn't make sense. Our body is not gonna do that. It's gonna use that body fat that we store. So there's nothing to worry about it. You can actually harness the power of human growth hormone and put on some size. The, yeah. So you could sleep 90% of your workout, wake up for hours and 12 hours. Yep. Yeah, so you would have, let's say you had your last meal at 8 p.m. You go to bed, you wake up, you did a morning session, and then you wait until 12 p.m. to have your next meal, a 16 hour fast. And you worked out and you continued fasting. Yep. It's, it, so, he says, he's saying, if you didn't hear him, that he's been doing this for several years, he just didn't realize he was doing it. I get that a lot, by the way. Your body is producing ketones even though you're not eating a keto diet because you're burning fat for fuel. So when you burn fat for fuel, for fuel you're, you're, you're doing keto, in, 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 essentially, because you're producing ketones. So, you are doing it. You're doing fasting and your body's producing ketones and you feel good. You said you don't get hangry, you feel good. So you're fat adapted, that's great. That's the way we want to be. So you're doing good work, dude. <laughs> Any other questions? My time is up. Okay, I got, I got one more, and then, the, and then for you who have the hand up, when I'm done, you can come to me and we'll chat. Yeah. Apple cider vinegar is awesome. I love it. So that morning hack that I gave you with the water and the salt, throw some apple cider vinegar in there. It doesn't break your fast. You can also do bulletproof coffee, by the way, in a fasted state, that's called a fat fast. So it's coffee with butter and coconut oil. I call it a fasting crutch. But apple cider vinegar is great. I think everybody should be having, having apple cider vinegar. It's disgusting, but it's good for you. Either way, capsule or liquid. I, I do liquid, yeah. So guys, I wanna say thank you so much. It really means so much to me. And uh, enjoy the rest of the week.